Our next story is about a surgeon claiming he has performed a successful head transplant on a monkey. Okay, so That's this true. one is actually kind of, I'm torn about how I feel about it because one part of me is I'm very much against animal cruelty, but I'm very pro-science. And so that's where I find mm. myself in a weird <laughs> walking and I'm not sure which direction I want to go. So the scientist has been perform performing head transplants on thousands of mice over the last few years. And this is what he's been focusing a lot of his time on. Um, so after he successfully performed a lot of these um, surgeries on mice, I guess another point that I need to point out is that he hasn't been connecting the spinal cord. And so these mice have been... Paralyzed. Yeah, functioning with their brain, but at the same time, they are not able to physically move anymore, so then they're euthanized immediately <laughs> after. Oh my God. I mean, that's mice. I mean, I think more mice die every day from in like science labs than we would ever care to know. Yeah, but then we can get into the conversation of how can you put one life above another? So, Steep. yeah, it's and so then, so after completing all of these um, surgeries on mice, he moved on to a monkey. He said the surgery was just as successful with a monkey as it had been with the mice, and that he did not connect the spinal tissue as well, so that he did euthanize the um, monkey a few minutes after completing No, the he did the monkey 20 hours after. 20 hours, the, okay. The mice Were, are like pretty much immediately yeah. after. Um, but 20 hours is a long time. I mean, I don't know, I find this story, I don't know, you know, w the expression is um, you have to crack a couple eggs to make an omelet, yeah. right? Um, but at the same time, like, I feel bad for the monkey, right? Yeah. Like he didn't do anything to deserve to have his head transplanted on another monkey's body. I and know. then he gets euthanized after like, you know, 20 hours of probably terror. Um, then he just gets euthanized. It's kind of a weird idea to me too, because I cannot really think of a real life scenario where this would actually come into play. Well, you could have um, a situation where someone is paralyzed from the neck down. And this is hypothetically, yeah. uh, obviously, you know, we're not close. Um, but someone's paralyzed from the neck down, and this research could eventually lead to them replacing their body with a new body. Um, I guess that makes sense, but you would need a body that is you'd need a transplant. Perfect, yeah, and then well, someone would have to have like their head cut off or perfectly. crushed or something. Yeah, so there's like a lot of timing involved, a lot of weird cases to that. But another thing that is a little bit frustrating with this story is the fact that the scientists went directly to the press before releasing a primary uh, scientific publication for it, which right. is a no-no in the science world. You do all of your research, you go through a lot of different primary resources, and then you have your information published by a reputable source. And Peer reviewed, this guy right. was like, F that, I am going right to the source. I am telling- <laughs> like, I did it. I'm like telling everyone, I'm like sprinting out of his house. Monkey. He's like, I did a thing. But yeah. I don't know. It freaks me out a little bit, though. That's yeah, pretty it's scary. Tough. It's tough.